You're not the nut you used to be, but you're not the tree you're gonna be. But until you learn how to appreciate where you are in the process, you won't get the power to evolve to your ultimate destiny. Tonight, I don't know where you're at on this journey. And I don't know what life looks like for you right now. But I know this, if you're ever gonna be who God's called you to be, it's gonna require confidence. And if you've lost it, you gotta find it. And if you've misplaced it, you gotta get it back. You have to set your face. The people that need to be for you will be for you. People that will celebrate you. People that will cheer you on. People that stick with you through thick and thin. But too often, we're trying to convince people to be our friend, convince them to spend time with us. But if someone doesn't see the gift that you are, if they don't recognize your talents, value your friendship, do yourself a favor and move on. No offense, but they are not a part of your destiny. When you do discover a cause worth dying for, and you do realize it's worth living for, how many know it's worth giving for? It's worth working for? It's worth sacrificing for? But what I've learned is, is that if you don't have confidence, you'll never walk out your cause. You're so busy starving the sapling, trying to get to the tree, that you cancel out the potential of being a tree because you don't feed where you are. You're in love with tomorrow, but you're neglecting today. Until you are faithful over the few, you cannot be ruler over the many. So you need to take your eye off of the tree and water what you got now. You're gonna get what you focus on. What you focus on gets larger and larger in your life. It grows. It's like, like if you look at what's wrong with your life, you can actually get to the point where you just hate your life. And you think that you've got the worst life ever when really somebody else might look at your life and they might actually wish they had your life because they're seeing the stuff that you quit looking at a long time ago because you're so busy looking at all the stuff you don't like, you've forgotten what you do like. You might marry somebody and you might get so focused on what you don't like that you forgot what you liked about them that caused you to want to marry them to start with. Go ahead and work on your level. Go ahead and master where you are. And after a while, without you even trying to do it, where you started will turn into where you're going. That's what destiny is pulling you into. From the rehearsal to the recital, once you have mastered it, whether the recital is business, marriage, accounting firms, real estate development, family, whatever your recital is, once you have maximized it, you get to sit with the masters. So the key to your life is finding a vision that imposes discipline on you. In essence, vision is the source of discipline. Discipline is the root of leadership. It actually is the, the very nature that attracts people to you. A disciplined person naturally begins to attract people because people admire discipline in other people. That's why we go to see athletes perform. We really admire their discipline that they put themselves through. If you do the same thing as a person, people will then begin to believe what you say. Your very life of discipline creates trust. People trust a person who they perceive to be disciplined. There's a lot of destruction going on in the world right now. There's a lot of loss happening in the world right now. And I've actually been through a lot of chaos and I've been through a lot of destruction. And one thing that I've learned is I learned that I had to keep my emotions in check. And that's the same thing I tell other people when they're going through trying times. And that does not mean that you're not going to have emotions. But by keeping your emotions in check, I mean, don't make decisions based on your emotions. They're going to lead to a bad place. Don't let that happen. Instead, if you feel yourself getting emotional, take a step back. Detach. Look around. Think about the long-term implications of the decisions that you're making and make your decisions 
based on logic and based on reason and based on long-term outcomes. No matter what happens to you, it ain't over. Ain't no such a thing as over. As long as God wakes you up, that means he ain't through with you yet. And if he wakes you up, you got a shot to correct it and get it right. That also means that he has something for you that you've yet to receive. So as long as he was waking me up, I figure what else? He can't take nothing else from me. I ain't got nowhere to stay, so. That if you want it, you got to go get it. Some of y'all got this concept of what you want. You know, some of y'all are motivated by broke. Just wanting to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Other folks are motivated by materialistic things. It's a very simple concept. If you want it, you got to go get it. You've got creativeness in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side. Now, will it be turbulent? Yes. Will it be easy? No, no. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. See, a lot of people won't try anything different in life because they don't want to get hurt. But too often, we're trying to convince people to be our friend, but if someone doesn't see the gift that you are, if they don't recognize your talents, value your friendship, do yourself a favor and move on. No offense, but they are not a part of your destiny. You don't have to play up to people, let them manipulate you. Oh, the people God has for you don't have to be talked into liking you. If you're weary with smallness, and you're tired all the time, and you can't focus. What are you gonna do with greatness? You're asking for more, and you haven't mastered less. You gotta get focused, man. You gotta understand that this hard time that you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. Every trial and tribulation you go through prepares you for the life God has for you. What do you think about? What is your dream? Do you want a larger life? And that, that you're going to get a breakthrough, that things are going to be better for you, that you're willing to work on you, you learning how to live life now. It was my philosophy to change. The set of the sail of better thinking, correcting the errors of the past and picking up new disciplines for the future. That's all I had to do at the end of the first six. And my total life changed. The second six years was totally different than the first six of my working life. If you're stuck, you're stuck in a story. There's a story you're telling yourself that doesn't serve you anymore. And you have to evaluate what that story is. But what you need to do is you need to alter your associations. You need to do something in a short window of time. No question about it. You definitely need to evaluate what is no longer needed and evaluate the story you're telling yourself. What's your philosophy of life? What are your beliefs, things that you feel very strongly about? What are some of the things that you have picked up along the way that you've been doing them for so long you think that they're you, that you need to begin to re-examine them and perhaps get them out of your life? See, a lot of things we're doing, we do unconsciously because we picked it up somewhere in life. You have to have a boldness to follow what God's put in your heart. You can't worry about what everybody else thinks. If someone gets offended because you're not taking their advice, that's not your problem. If you live by the opinion of others, you will never become who you were created to be because people will try to keep you in their box in who they want you to be. I am going to be curious about myself. I am going to make it my mission every day to wake up and discover a new version of me. I'm gonna make it my mission to explore the corners, the far corners of myself, just to see what's there, because I wanna know what else is in me. You know, you've got to be curious about yourself. And that's the attitude to have if you wanna get more out of this life. I used to try to change it. You can hang apples on a pear tree. I'm telling you, it won't help. You can put up a sign, this is an apple tree. Sure enough, come the season, pears. Here's what I learned. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. It's your skills that buy you a future. Money and no skills, and I'm telling you, you're still cool. Money and no courage, you're broke. You know your strengths. 
You know your dreams. You know your heart. So why don't you sit down and reflect for a moment and ask yourself, what do I really want to accomplish that I haven't accomplished yet? Get in your area, in your space, and say, I need to challenge me because here's what I feel and here's what I believe. When you challenge yourself, you're challenging yourself in an area that is close to your heart and it's who you are. Accept the challenge because you can't grow without a challenge. You can't get rich without a challenge. You have to understand the challenge. But that's the key is to now develop wisdom to overcome the challenge. Don't wish for less challenge, but more wisdom. You can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Humans can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Just being aware of the concept will put you light years ahead of 99.9% .9 of the Just awareness of the power of identity. Just now you knowing about the thermostat puts you in the 0.1% of all the people on the spinning earth right now. There are three kinds of people. There are people who make things happen, people that watch things happen, and people that don't know what happened. That's the majority. Hoping that somebody with mercy and pity We'll look in their direction. No! Hey, listen here. You've been given authority and dominion of everything on the face of the earth. Listen to me. Be willing to learn something. Keep moving in the direction of where you want to go. Continue to fall forward. One of the things I'm suggesting you look at, what is it that you need to be in the process of doing more of or less of? Like being more direct. Saying no without feeling guilty. More focus. One year I decided to do one thing well. I looked at all of my talents and I decided the strongest one, my ability as a speaker, that's the one I'm going to focus on. But only when I decided to focus that I begin to reap the rewards of my talent. As we get older as persons and as businesses, we have a tendency to want to cling to the old, to be suspicious of anything new and exciting. This is a successful way of doing things. Let's stay with it. Let's hang on to what we've got and ride out a future we can't be sure of. But this attitude, in many ways, can only lead to decline and eventual failure. This is a turning of the back to life, and it's something life won't stand for. To grow, we must let go. See, when you get to a certain place, when you're willing to risk, you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, what else is there? Yet many of you have been working on jobs. That is not you. Why do you do it? Oh, to pay the bills. But you've gotten to a point where that's not enough. People telling you, hey, you can't do this, that doesn't matter. You have no idea what's possible for you and because you don't even know what's possible for you, they have no clue what's possible for you. So you've got to keep going and keep pushing. There's some pain involved, but you've got to go past the pain and I'm telling you what's on the other end is, 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 is more rewarding than anything you can think about right now. All right? So you've got to go in there, take that attitude with you. This might be the day. This might be the day. Ask yourself truthfully, your big goals and dreams, are you really clear on what they are? Because if you don't have that, we can't even get started. You know how mandatory it is to be clear and specific for what you want, right? Can you get laser obsessively focused almost to its exclusivity, almost, but for an extended period of time? The older we get, the more we realize we're not going to be here forever. Life is flying by. When you realize how fast time is going, it should bring a sense of urgency, a sense of focus. Your assignment has an expiration date. Your time on this earth is not unlimited. Don't go through life trying to please everyone. If you try to keep every person happy, the one person that won't be happy is you. Come out from under that debt. Be nice, go the extra mile, but don't be a people pleaser. You have to understand why you're going through the period that's causing you to make you want to give up. The devil has one mission, is to rob you of your destiny. If he can get you to give up, you have been robbed of your destiny. 
If he gets you to never follow your dream, he robs you of your destiny. You got to get focused, man. You got to understand that this hard time that you're going through, everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. Every trial and tribulation you go through prepares you for the life God has for you. And in order for you to say yes to some things, you got to say no to a lot of other things. Where you end up depends upon which road you take. Where you end up in eternity will be determined by the road you take here on earth. What you do while you are in this world will determine forever where you spend forever. Everything you ever thought you would not make it through you got past it. Now, if you're currently going through something right now, guess what? You're going to get past that too. It always works that way. You always do. Everything that happens to you in your life, whether it's a trauma, whether it's a disease, whether it's somebody treating you in a certain way, there's a lesson in all of it. No limit people understand the lesson in life and therefore celebrate the lessons. See, a lot of times we allow ourselves to be fed and to be programmed and to being afraid of. You watch the news and read the newspaper, you'll be scared to come out the house. So what kinds of things, what kinds of thoughts are you feeding your consciousness? What kind of things are you putting in your mind that will enable you to either move forward or to justify why you're staying where you are? We have many areas to improve on. In every area we need to learn, we are not the greatest, we need to grow, we need to expand, and I'm not talking about numbers, I want to make sure we're really clear about that, I'm not talking about numbers at all, I'm talking about within. Some, some of you, you need to grow from within. Growing is not the mission, growing is not the goal. Us being healthy, that's the goal, and it just turns out that healthy things grow. And my point to you is if you don't have a goal, if you don't have something that keeps you sharp and focused, if you don't have challenges, you won't stay alive. You could drop into a pile of dust pretty quick if you don't have any. I don't care how old you are. I don't care who you are. You need a dream. Some people won't understand you. They'll get upset when you break out of the box. Someone told me, Joel, you've forgotten where we've come from. I thought I haven't forgotten. I just didn't want to stay there. Don't get stuck in the past. Don't get stuck in tradition. And when you get to that point in your life where you're not cursing the things that come your way and blaming the things that come your way and particularly blaming it on somebody else. And you hear it all the time. She hurt my feelings. How's that possible? How can anybody hurt your feelings? Your feelings come from your thoughts. No one can hurt your feelings without your consent. No one can embarrass you without your consent. These are choices that you have that come from the way that you think. Depression, frustration, anxiety, pain, disillusion. It's just a natural part of the process of becoming a stronger version of yourself. Because problems are what make us grow. Problems are what sculpt our soul. Problems are what make us become more. If we can realize that life is always happening for us, not to us, game over. All the pain and suffering disappears. Your problem is your gift. You're carrying dead weight because you got all this dead weight and you're operating over your capacity. It's going to take you that much longer to get there. If you don't know your starting point, friend, you're never going to get to your end point. And so we're being honest and we're being vulnerable and we're looking within and saying, who am I really? And Tozer would say to you and I, you want to know who you are? Just check the circle of your friends. You cannot get there with all of the people that you showed up with because your boat is at its capacity. If the boat is at 1,500, 
And because you're loyal, you have your boat now at 4,000 pounds in capacity. You are now on a boat that has blessings and opportunities, but it's, it's overweight. It's past its capacity. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your coworkers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. You get to decide. Let me tell you something. You get to decide if I'm gonna be rich, poor, mediocre, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. As you grow up and get older, you start realizing what actually makes sense for your life and what don't make sense for your life. Because I grew up with my brothers and sisters doesn't mean that we're actually going to walk in the same path. Because I have my friends that I grew up with doesn't mean that we're going to move and walk and have our lives, family, mind state, career choice, the way we think, the way we move, moving in the same direction. You should understand this, that it was always going to be your family and your friends that would be the first ones to try and talk you out of your vision and your big idea. That's why you're supposed to live your life. Focus on your intentions and do your thing. If I had paid attention to what people thought I was going to do with my life and what my career path would be, I would not be Tyrese Gibson. Character is self-imposed discipline for the sake of moral convictions. Self-imposed discipline. That means a person of character doesn't need the police. They police themselves. A person of character locks themselves up in the prison of their own convictions and they throw away the key. Some of y'all are loyal and have this power struggle with this concept called loyalty. You're so loyal, you're watching your career and your life and your surroundings crash and burn because you're being loyal to those friends. They're insecure and threatened by you and anything that you do and any move that you make. They are angry and mad and jealous and envious about anything that you have going. You hold on to things that don't make sense for the new season of your life. But because you actually know them, because you're comfortable with them, you hold on to dead weight. People are in your life for a reason. Other people are there for a season. But it's important to recognize when people's seasons are over. Now, keeping in mind our idea that a courageous person is not someone who never feels fear, but who fears the right thing at the right time in the right way. What really scares people about these situations is the sense that they're going to be helpless, that all their trust was placed in somebody or something, and now they've been let down and they can't do anything. They're helpless. Take your place make your mark and live your life god didn't bring you in this world to wake up and die one day and just be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant in this world you're still alive so therefore god is not done with you discipline is the root of all good qualities but you have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. It's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego so your ego doesn't get out of hand and control you. Character is sacrifice for principles. So character means you are willing to sacrifice friendship 
to protect your principles. You are willing to lose your best friend in order to keep your principles. The first challenge is for us to find ourselves. And we find ourselves when we discover our purpose. Find that purpose. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you secure. It's, it's your mooring. It, it keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. And so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do that will enable us to do some things and, and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? A truly confident person's belief in himself is strong enough so that he's able to believe in others. Distrust in yourself breeds distrust in everyone you meet. A confident person gives you confidence. She creates confidence in others. The strength of her character makes you a stronger character. Do you have character? Who are you with right now that you shouldn't be with? Think about it. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. To just divert your focus and attention. Look over here. Look at this shiny thing. Worry about what's going on here in this war. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives to just get us distracted so we never get obsessed. We never get laser focused. Ask yourself truthfully, your big goals and dreams, are you really clear on what they are? Because if you don't have that, we can't even get started. Other people will often see how God shaped you before you do. Because when you're naturally good at something, you think everybody's good at it. They're not. And when you're good at something, you just think it's a normal thing. Well, anybody should be able to do that. Well, they, they don't. And so other people will actually have to point it out in you. When the temptations outweigh the benefits, that's all it takes for some very unfortunate things to start happening. In my opinion, and I think there are very few exceptions to this, a bad person is simply somebody who doesn't have enough reasons to be good. Fear kills hope. Fear put people in the hospital. Fear can aid you, can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you're capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. And I ask you a question, what is the benefit of giving up on yourself, of not stepping out on life and taking life on? What is the benefit for you? What's the plus in that? And so ask yourself what you're willing to risk. What's the price you're willing to pay? Because what most people do when they're trying to chase their dream or their big outcome, the whole time they're negotiating the price in their head. Should I continue to do it? Is it worth it? I don't know if I can continue anymore. It's getting higher and that price is failure. And what happens is if you don't negotiate that price in advance, it's going to steal your focus and energy and become another distraction. When you find your spiritual gift, all of a sudden it'll give you an energy that when you're in the area of your weaknesses, you get tired, don't you? But when you're in the area of your strengths, you're energized. Decide to develop the habit right now, the habit of focusing on what's right in your world instead of what's wrong. The habit of focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't have in a situation, because those habits form the chain of your ultimate character, of who you become and how you end up living your life. We've got to condition ourselves, because if we don't, we'll go back to the automatic state that most people live in in today's society. Wisdom is a unique commodity, if indeed it can even be called a commodity. Unlike the other things people hunger for, wisdom is very hard to visualize. Books aren't wisdom, they're just pieces of paper bound together. Books can help create wisdom in people's mind, but if you look inside their heads, you won't find any wisdom there. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released.
And as always, thank you for watching. A long time ago, I was with a friend of mine, and his grandmother was in the hospital dying, and he wanted me to take her go see her. I was young, and she was dying. She had terminal illness. She knew she was dying. She asked her grandson to come see her. So I took him. We go in the hospital room, and, you know, she was in there. So I was standing behind him, and he was at her bed. She said to him, she said, do you know your great-grandfather's name? My boy said, no, nah, mom, dear, I, I don't know. She said, you know why you don't know his name? He said, why, mom, dear? She said, because he ain't leave you nothing. He, she said, when you walk away from my bed, you ain't going to see me no she said, go live your life so your children's grandchildren will know your name. Live a life where your children's grandchildren will know who you was, man. That they know your name. But they ain't gonna know your name if you wasn't great. They ain't gonna know your name if you don't leave them something. You cannot leave your family your job. My mom and dad, as great as they were, they left me empty-handed. But boy, the church she put in me, the God she put in me, my father instilled in me manhood. Do what you say you're going to do. Them two things from that Sunday school teacher and that coal miner shaped and formed who you standing in front of today. This who in front of you. Somebody. But that lesson that that grandmother taught that, taught that dude, it wasn't for him. It was for me. See, God just sent me that at day. But I needed to hear that. And ever since then, I've been trying to make my life so my children's grandchildren would know who I was when I leave this earth. That's what you got to do. You ain't got to clap for me. I, I don't really care. Look, man, I'm going to teach you four things real quick. Now, people told me one time, said, Steve, you missed your call. You should have been a preacher. No, no. I cuss way too much. I'm the last person need to be in a pool pit. I promised Dr. Boyd I wasn't going to cuss today. Now, I've wanted to three times already, but I haven't because Dr. Boyd said this is a dignified event. So I'm just going to honor that. Me personally, I don't see nothing wrong with cussing. Somebody said, but Steve, his kids in here. All your kids done heard cussing. And if they haven't, I recommend you start because it cuts back on butt whippings. I um, Lesson one is live your life so your children's grandchildren will know who you are. Go be great, y'all. Take this degree and make it more than just a piece of paper hanging on the wall. Take this degree and go change some lives with it. Make it a Put pressure on yourself. Go out there and, and ask God to help make you great. Don't go be regular. I don't really care for regular. I never really wanted a regular life. I wanted an extraordinary life. I've been asking God for this my whole life. Now, what he gave me is grace, way more than I ever asked for. I ain't never thought I'd be. Look, I already know. Y'all could have had a bigger star come down here. Somebody with a bigger name could have. No, no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. No. I don't even know why I said it. <laughs> I tried to be humble, but let's quit front. You know good and well, I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm Steve Harvey, man. <laughs> Dr. Phil don't even know where your school at. Ellen thought ASU was Arizona State. Y'all got who want to be here. I come down here, man, because I want to come down here. Look, and bottom line, it's a lot of diverse people in here. But can I tell you something? I love black people. I love black people my entire life. I ain't never shunned away from the fact that I was black. I starred on BET. I still go on BET. I know where it come from. Black people made me famous first. I crossed over, but my crossover was different. I built a bridge, and I let everybody come over here and see how I am. But I didn't get on the bridge and go over there. Because, see, when the bridge burned down, you got to be able to get back home. I never left home. So I've been this here the whole time. That's no disrespect to anybody sitting in here. I just got to talk real with you. Now, if you didn't want real, you should have had somebody else come down here. But this is the truth of the matter. Now, second thing I want to teach you. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. You got to learn this one now. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. Because this is what you're going to have to do. Because let me tell you something. As successful as you've been up to this point, once again, I congratulate you to the fullest. But let me tell you something. You boss to get to fail. you Because you finna taste life like it really is. Bill Bailey and I have been involved in other enterprises, but the enterprise, you know, fortunately was successful and we had a chance to affect a lot of other people's lives. But guess what happened over those years and which continues to today, we continue to invest in each other. I come up with a great idea, I get on the phone, I call him. He comes up with a book he's read, he said, this is a masterpiece, you've got to read it. So we have this chance to invest each other. And while we walk the farm country of Kentucky, we invest in each other. Uh, we walk the beaches of California and he has a habit of grabbing your arm when you're walking and talking. So he would grab my arm until this one would get sore and then we'd trade places so he could, you know, grab the other arm for a while while we're walking and talking. But a chance to contribute to each other.
And what I share with him, he shares with others. And what he shares with me, I share with you and others around the world. That contribution of sharing with each other, being influential, leadership, making a contribution to someone's life that no telling how far it may go from the time it starts. Friendship is wow, it's one of the most valuable possessions in the world. Good friends, relationships, you know, what really matters when we all get right down to it is that inner circle. When we should spend as much time as possible, maximum time, maybe borrow a little from other things that aren't quite that valuable, that are essential, but not quite that valuable, and spend more time, family, inner circle, close friends. Because that's where a lot of the drive and ambition to do well comes from. Making dreams come true for that inner circle. You and them furnishes the fuel for high ambition. Not to be ambitious just for the name or for the fame or for the money or for the useful things you can do like generosity for the future. But at least to do as much as you can to nourish that association and communication, inner circle, conversations in art, whether it's with a child or whether it's with husband and wife or friends. Used to be years ago, we wrote letters that only got sent or, you know, received once in a while. Now we just jump on the phone and talk. But back then, people seemed to take thoughtful care about putting into words how they really felt. And it's easy to be a bit too casual and not put as much how you really care into language, especially when we're talking all day long and all day long. It's hard to be that unique when we really would like to be unique, say something extraordinary about how we feel. But it gets lost in sort of the mundane, ordinary conversation rather than taking the time to say something unique about how you care and about how you feel. When Judy, my wife and I, when we parted ways, there's a chance to be, it's one expression called born again or reborn. We have a father for the first time as well as a new baby. We have a new father. So it's the new baby's life to work out. Now it's also the new father's life. And probably as a father, best instruction would be to study and practice and work hard at seeing if you couldn't be a class A father. If it's the mother's first time, we have a brand new baby but a brand new mother. Now that she has a chance to live a brand new life, different life experience than ever before, shouldn't she study and practice and learn, listen? try to find ways to become a class A mother. About 16 years ago, I became a grandfather. And I have practiced diligently now the last 16 years of being a five-star grandfather to my two grandchildren, Nathaniel and Natalie. They're exceptional, highly talented. I just published a book of my granddaughter's poems that she wrote when she was 12 and the art illustration by her brother, Nathaniel. I Love What I See is the title by Natalie Pangrazio. Now she's 15 and she's written now a collection of 10 stories for children. And her brother, Nathaniel, is an accomplished classical pianist. He writes music, sends it off for competition. These are talented kids, artists, and writers and musicians at such a young age. So what I've done is try to specialize, helping my granddaughter publish this book when she was, what, 14? The poem she wrote when she was 12. It's really good. I've got to read you something. I told you about my granddaughter, Natalie. She wrote these poems, and we're publishing them, and here's one when she was 12. It's called Metaphors of Flowers. From those whose imaginations love to take flight, they will use even a flower to determine wrong from right. An iris is like wisdom. The deep color like the depth of knowledge, and the yellow like the bright ideas one receives. The knowledge spreads upwards as do the iris's leaves. A lily is simplicity like the whiteness of its flower, but in simplicity there is beauty like the yellow stamen's tower. Truth is like a dandelion which is bold and has not sinned, and truth is spread far and wide like dandelion seeds upon the wind. They soon find a place to rest and grow in someone's heart, and the cycle begins again just as it did start. A daisy is like happiness and spreads its face to the sun. It loves everything around it and in everything finds fun. Hate is like a thistle, which is awful and sharp to the touch. It combines envy, anger, and most of all, disgust. And finally, best of all, love represents a rose. Love is sweet to your heart as a rose is to your nose. Love combines trust, hope, faith, and integrity. There are good paths and bad paths, and no matter which one you chose, love is just as sweet as the loveliest road. My granddaughter. When I'm broken, I relish it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use it. Because if I'm broken, then I just found my limitations. And until... I know what my limitations are, how can I push them? How can I get better? But once I see, 
once I feel it, once I see where I was broken, then I can attack that weakness. I can fill in that gap. I can reinforce that breach. If you break, it means it's time to fortify your will to make it stronger. Then look, there's there's all kinds of different ways to break. You can break physically, you can break mentally, you can break your heart, you can break your spirit, and none of those are fun. And all of those are gonna leave a mark. But the mark that they leave can be the mark of victory or it can be the mark of defeat. Because every time you break, and in every way that you break, while it's a chance, it's definitely a chance for you to give up and for you to just to fall apart. But there's also opportunity. There's opportunity to get stronger, and get smarter, and get faster, and get tougher, and get more stable, and get more resilient, and get better. When you break, you have the opportunity to show the world, the whole world, what you are really made of. So, so if you break, if, if you break, fight isn't over. In fact, if you break, the fight is just beginning. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place covered and you're covered in blood and sweat and dirt and filth as you rise above what you were and as you take the form of of who you are supposed to be you will see that in the very act of standing up, in the very act of fighting on, you will become and you will remain unbroken. The number one thing that's going to change your life, the only thing that will change your life, change your business, change your money, change your relationship, is you must raise your standard. And I know that sounds boring, Stupid, basic, but it's the truth. The only thing that changes our life long term is when we raise our standards. What does that mean? That sounds so boring and dumb. It means that all of us in life have things we want. We don't get what we want. We get what we have to have. Remember I said earlier, we all get what we tolerate in ourselves and other people. But when you're no longer willing to tolerate something, that's when your life changes. The difference in people is their standards, period. The difference in people is their standards, period. What do I mean by standards? Everyone in the world has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder, I should make more calls, I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds, and they get mad at themselves, and they what I call should all over themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. It's like if you want to take the island and you're the head of the army, and you want to take the island, the most powerful way to take the island is burn the boats. Because if there's no way to go back, it's amazing what happens when it's a must to do something versus a should. That's what makes human beings succeed. 